I'm ready, da. And where are you going? I'll bend you up. I'm going with you. You have to stay here. But why? You have your own chores, which I count on you to do, yeah? Besides, I need you here to protect your mother. Hmm. I'll see you tonight. Say that? Y'all. <laughs> Thank you to mend that fence you just cut. My ship will get out. Well, see, now that's just what we intended. You got no right to fence in open range. This is not open range anymore. It's my land, legally homesteaded. Mr. Hunter knows that. We ain't fixing no fence. Strangers with your fences and your sheep and your piece of paper. I think you own it. I'm gonna make this easy. I'm gonna buy it from you. I won't sell. No, I guess not. But your widow will.
Oh, Rebecca. You can go back to town. We take care of our own. Mrs. Yoder, take this. She does not need your pills, doctor. She will pray. Have it your way. When will someone stop this man? You'll have to take that up with the sheriff. Zellis, have you arrested Fergus Hunter and his hired killers? I've been over there and I talked to them. They said they caught Ben Yoder with Hunter cattle. And I suppose Ben Yoder cut his own fence too. No, they cut the fence all right. I told them to fix it. The man's dead. And they will fix the fence? Hunter has witnesses. Nothing I can do. So this is your justice. Time and again, Satan comes as a wolf among lambs, slaughtering the innocent. And yet you, you do nothing. Pays to stay on the winning side, don't it, Gets? I don't make the rules, Doc. Huh. You just work for the man that does. Joe, 
Right into town and fetch Doc Henry. Ben Joe, you have to. If you can't say it to him, then you write it down, okay? This man is dying, Banjo. Now go. off his rib and lodged right next to the liver. Is he gonna die? <laughs> I've seen men punctured with more holes than a pie safe, and they still clung to life. Well, makes you wonder why they bother. Another one. Do you think he's... A shootist? Yeah. You still want to save him? He's God's creature. It is God's decision. God had an ounce of sense. He'd send this one before the day is out. But you will do your best to prevent that. Yes! Oh, try to save us the trouble of burying him. Help me out here, will you? Prison shackles, no doubt. Yeah, let's get this on. Okay. Hmm. Somebody took a whip to him, too. Makes you wonder what kind of marks were left on his soul. And if they'll thank you for saving him in the unlikely event that he lives. Hmm. 
I'm going to leave you this carbolic acid to cleanse his wound. You needn't fry his insides with any more kerosene. But I thought you were taking him with you. He's in no condition to travel or to do you any harm. Is he going to shoot us? We mean him no harm, Benjo. So why would he want to hurt us? Hmm? Besides, he'd need these. I to do? Dump him in the corner like a bundle of old gunny sacks? Would I say such a thing? You said you had the doctor out. He would have died otherwise. We don't need outsiders all caught up in our lives. We need to do kindness, our Noah. You don't listen. You never did. You reason things out for yourself. God gave us minds. He must have meant us to reason. For the head of the woman is the man. My man is dead. You set this food that was meant for me at Ben's place. I have to believe. I did it without thought. It is no disloyalty to him for you to turn to me. I cannot think about those things yet. Ben is gone, Rebecca. So was my Martha. And we still have lives to live. Plain lives, with boys to raise, and more children to bear for the glory of God and the church. The Zooks barn was burned to the ground last night. Every week it's something else. You need the protection of a husband. You'll be running low on firewood soon. I'll send my boy over in a few days with his axe. That would be kind, if Rose doesn't mind. He does what I tell him. Everything comes to be part of the music. 
sooner or later. And now you have two. I don't know where it comes from. Music is forbidden in the plain life. Except for singing of the hymns. So I've never told anyone. Where's my gun? Where is it? It's in the cabinet. I'll go get it. When you go. In a safe place. No such thing. my boy. Well, I might have said bang. Put that thing down. It appears to me you don't have a hell of a lot to worry about. Hear me well. I'll let you die before I let you harm my boy. Doc, Mr. Hunter, Sheriff, some sick people out of the Yodel place. Concerned about your neighbor's welfare, are you? you recognize anyone? Oh, is that him? Is that the man out there with the Yoda widow? Yeah. I was up there looking at the hole in his side. Probably dead by now. I'm thinking those holy howls of piety. I thought they relied on the Lord to fight their battles. Maybe they couldn't seek of losing. The plain people, and this is a plain house. We trust in our God to take care of us. Punishment for the wicked. Punishment? Is that what you think I'm offering you? Gratitude. 
Well, it seems a bit late for a proper meeting since you've already cursed me, choked me, and bled buckets all over my best muslin sheets. And you've stripped me buck naked. I'm Rebecca Yoder. Johnny Galt. John said I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make, Make straight the way of the Lord. You know the scriptures. I've had a few lessons. Where's Mr. Yoder? Water the horses if you want. Then ride on, please. Much obliged, ma'am. No, that's not what I want. Mr. Hunter, my place is not for sale. Must be hard for you and your boy. Out here all alone since your husband died. Don't turn your back on me, woman. Now listen. And you listen carefully. Well, well. Johnny Gold, isn't it? I believe I heard you speaking unkindly to this kind lady. So? So please don't do it again. Ma'am. Be seeing you again. I hope so. Fever has settled in his chest. Whoever it was said only the good die young. Never lived in Montana. Laudanum. It will ease his passing. God knows where he's going. They'll be suffering enough. The Lord may yet see fit to save him. <laughs> he might. Though I can't say I believe he'd be doing the rest of us much of a favor. How can we know what someone's fate will be? You have a care, Mrs. Yoder. The powers of darkness sometimes do prevail. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> you mustn't play music in this house. It was wrong of us to listen. Instruments of music are not allowed in the plain and narrow life. We believe they lead us into sin. Do you never sin, Mrs. Yoder? Well, I don't go out of my way to do it. I do. Far, far out of my way. Don't mind dressing partly plain. Looks good on you. My life work. You have to learn how to read eyes so you don't go alone. I don't want to know anything about that. I will not have violence around my son. Give me your word. You will not <laughs> harm my boy. My word. What if I was a shootist of some repute? gambler and a liar. I think that you've been all those things. But if you give me your word, I'll believe you. Then you have it.
then, Joe, you eat those pickled beets first. And use your napkin. Yes, sir. Mr. Goat, do you kill people? Ben Joe Yoder, what a terrible thing to say. Now you apologize. There's no need, ma'am. Prison for? Prison. I was never in. Oh, yeah, prison. No. That was because I didn't eat all my pickled beets. Appears to me, them sheep got you running every which way over there. Sometimes I think it'd be easier to move the farm to them. <laughs> Could you help me out with something? All our married men have beards. But my husband once had a wound that required him to be clean shaven. And I undertook to help him. Sure hope you're not right, let me, Mrs. Yoda. Perhaps you should say your prayers, Mr. Galt. I hope this isn't your people's version of the blindfold before the execution. No. This is my version of paying you back for some of the anxious moments you've caused me. Why do you wear this? A woman's hair should be kept covered, except from her husband. Seems like people got a rule for just about everything. Why would God or any man breathing want to cover something so pretty? How do I look? What? Am I bleeding? No. But your nose looks crooked. <laughs> now look close. I know I gotta be bleeding somewhere. You are not. Noah, how nice of you to come calling. I broke a wagon wheel back on the road. Oh. Mr. Galt, this is my good neighbor and my particular friend, Noah Weaver. How do you do, Mr. Weaver? How do you do? I came to ask, Rebecca, if your use will be dropping soon. Will you need my help? Oh, thank you. Not just yet, I should think. And if they come while Mr. Galt is still here, We'll see if we can't make a lamb liquor out of him. I sure hope that ain't what it sounds like. Have no fear, Mr. Galt. You appear to be fit enough to be moving on soon. Oh, he's hardly ready to ride a horse. 
I have a spare wheel in the barn, if you like. You want some help? No, thank you. Light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Ecclesiastes. What made you folks settle way out here? Back in Ohio, life was hard. Someone always trying to push us out. My da saw this very valley in a dream. And he led us here. We thought it would be our promised land. Sometimes the will of the Lord is hard to understand. Yeah, you know, there's always trouble when sheep come to cattle country. Mr. Hunter kills our animals and poisons our watering holes. And he had his man murder my Ben. They hung him for a cattle thief is what they did. I'll kill him for you if you want me to. What? Hunter and those men that hung your husband. No. It was just an offer. I figure I owe you. Terrible thing to say. Don't you say such a thing. What would become of our souls, Mr. Galt? Not your souls I'm worried about.
and Joe. Come out, Banjo. Teach me. Do it for real. I don't know if my arm can take the kick of a gun yet. But won't they come? It's time you got to sleep in your own bed again. Till I can move on, I'll bunk in that wagon out there in the yard. That way, if any trouble comes. Whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. God will protect us. Without the help of your guns. Mr. Galt, I need your help. to do with those guns, Mr. Galt. Aim them at some poor youth's head and demand that you push harder. <laughs> no, I was fixing to point them at you. First time you told me to go lick something. Just start by separating out some of the ones who look like they're gonna drop. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go first? There's a baby one here, but I think it's dead. Try to get it breathing. What? And grab it by the hind legs and swing it around. Swing it around. Girl, get a breathing. Come on, girl. You stand and
I've been thinking, Mr. Galt. If you'd like to stay on through summer, I could pay you a dollar a day and found. I'm thinking, Mrs. Yoder, that uh, I'd be bound to accept such an offer. I get the feeling I should have held out for two dollars a day. My little brother, Mr. Galt. You're apt to catch yourself a fly. Good to meet you. <laughs> my older brothers and my father. Brace yourself. What are you thinking, Rebecca? Bringing him here? He's here to witness the preaching. Oh. You just now sounded like a sick hog, our Samuel. He's an outsider. He does not belong here. It's not a forbidden thing. And I've hired him to work my farm through summer. Father? Oh. Well, I must go. We women sit separate from the men. Man say, I love God, and he hateth his brother, then he is a liar. For this commandment hath he given us, that he who loveth God love his brother also. for pretty. That's what you used to say to me when you bring me flowers. We had us a nice crop of fat lambs, and the bone pile's been small. You'd have been so proud of Benjo. It's hard sometimes. 
arms. Shot Johnny Gold. More like Woodrow Wharton. The coward who shot an unarmed man. That ain't the way I'll tell it. No. A coward and a liar. You know, you're beginning to rile, my boy. <laughs> In spite of what you people have done, I figure it would pain these kind folks to see me blow your sorry head off. On the other hand, it wouldn't bother me one bit. Enjoy your walk, Woodrow. Johnny! You're a good man. Outside is sought to take my grandson from me. You and outside I gave him back. This time. But it ain't over. Seems to me you should sell out and move on. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and to them that are secure in the mountain. If it can't be removed one way, like as not, you'll be removed another. God's will be done. Rebecca, Abraham, Levi, Samuel. You make jokes and deny the power of God. But you would be dead if the horse had not spooked. That was God's doing. Well, sure enough. That must have been a miracle. Come inside, everyone. Put that away. Don't get me in trouble. Mm.
And what happened back there? With your father? I promised that come shearing season, I would marry and you would be gone. Find a horse. You want to help me pick one out? A horse? You're the one that promised I was going to be gone. I ain't walking. Buy us horse traders a couple of sacks of gold. Yeah. You better wait out here. Your ma will have both our hides. Sasperillas. I'll need another. I don't want to hear it. Then. It wasn't Johnny's fault. He just went in to get us a couple of sarsaparillas. And then those men came in. The ones who killed Doc.
Johnny. Beautiful morning. The sky is so big. I should be moving on. You promised to stay through summer. Johnny, the music the earth makes. Do you hear that? I hear all the sounds in my head. It's wicked, but... You can never be wicked. Brown.
down and wallow in the mud with the rest of us sinners or cling to your high ground? I believe I'll cling. Get around the other side then, help me. Got me all wet. Now you're all wet. But you're not yet. Johnny. When I was about Benjo's age, I lived in an orphanage near Fort McCavitt, down in Texas. Every year come spring, they'd get us all spruced up. Bath, clean clothes, real haircut take us down to the church. We all thought it was so somebody could adopt us, so we're all thinking, pick me, pick me, pick me. Of course, what those kind folks were really doing was just renting us out as cheap labor. You know, one year, a hog farmer named Cowper did pick me. And he put me right to work. If I did the smallest thing wrong, he would beat the living out of me. So, first chance I got, I ran away. But he got the dogs after me, and he dragged me back. He chained me up to a post in the barn next to the scalding box, right underneath a big carcass hook. And then he hauled up a live hog right there over my head. And he took out his curved skinning knife and he stuck that hog and left it there, squealing, bleeding, while he read to me from the scriptures. That took that hog a considerable time to die. Well, then old Cowper gutted it told me he'd do the same thing to me if I ever ran away again. After that, when I wasn't working, he kept me shackled. It took me two years to weaken the link in that chain. But one night, I finally got loose. And I snuck into his house. And I stood over him in his bed. And I said to him, nice as could be, pardon me, Mr. Cowper. 
when he opened his eyes. No, let me finish. Let me finish. When he opened his eyes, I ran a pitch for him right through his neck. I've been running and killing ever since. And I am good at it. I got eyes in the back of my head. I don't trust nobody. I don't, I don't belong anywhere. I don't deserve God's forgiveness. And I... I don't deserve you. Just let me go, Rebecca. Johnny. Mose and Benjo, they came up to take the herd early. I know. I asked him to. Why'd you do that? Give up my family and oh, my God, it's too much to ask. What will I do to you? They'll make me go on my knees before the church and confess my sins. I will beg to be absolved and I will vow never to sin in that way again. And it will never more be spoken of by any of us. And you will leave here. Never to return. Well, that's what they want. What do you want? It doesn't matter what I want. Yes, it does, Rebecca. That's all that matters. It's not true!
plain woman must marry plain. Why? Why can't you do what you want? I can't. I had another brother, Johnny. And he had strayed from the plain way. He was placed under the van. He was shunned. I couldn't speak to him or acknowledge him. I was supposed to make him turn back to us. Because no one can live without family. But he held out. And so did we. Until one night, he came into my father's barn. And he threw a rope over a rafter. It killed him. It killed him. Stay with me until they do what they will do. Rebecca Yoder, if you can face Almighty God with a penitent heart, then confess to your sins now, and ye shall be forgiven of them. I confess that I failed to keep myself separate, that I took the outsider, Johnny Galt, into my house, allowing myself and my son to be touched by his worldly ways and corrupting influences. I confess to having fallen into the sin of fornication with the outsider, Johnny Gold. I confess to having fallen in love with the outsider, Johnny Galt. The love I have for him had 
comes over me and over me. It's like the music. Only it doesn't stop. It just goes on and on. And I think to myself, if God loves all his creatures, even the unbelievers, would he demand that I deny the love I bear for this one man? Rebecca. I looked into my heart. For the shame I must feel for what I've done. But it isn't there. I cannot lie to you or to God or to myself. I cannot pretend to believe what I do not, and I do not believe that my love for Johnny is wrong. I'm so sorry. My brothers and my sisters, I'm so sorry. Rebecca Yoder. Rebecca Galt. You have been placed under the ban by all members of the church. We will not share a table with you or have discourse of any kind with you. Never will we speak your name. From this day forth, until such time as you repent, to us you are dead. I don't know why you've done this. To seduce a plain woman from her family and her church. Why have you chosen to become her damnation? Noah. You know this woman. She isn't damned.
It was the voice of God. It won't come back. You two be careful up there. Boys. Got your sling, little David? Uh, how come you can t talk to me but not her? You're not being shunned. I'm not even supposed to talk about her. I'm sorry, Banjo. There was a bear up here two nights ago. Nice big one, killed a couple of sheep. I figure we'll be back. Bears like their meat kind of spoil. I'll be ready. what happened here and who did it you tell him if he doesn't like it he knows where to find me I... I'll take that to mean that you'll do as I say Take the weaver boy's arm off. I've come for my boy. He shouldn't be moved. He's lost a lot of blood.
What are you going to do? I'll tell you what I will not do. I will not turn the other cheek again. Watch one of my family get killed. Is this the only one who'd stand up with you? Ray wanted to have a shot at you. But that brat gave him a headache. Gold, what you don't seem to understand is that I always win. you doing anything because she has a 44 caliber bullet lodged next to her pulmonary artery you get that bullet out boy either way she's going to die you save her damn it
Mind those ruts now. Don't you worry. I'll take it nice and slow.
Thank you.